They clad in armor, smeared with zombie blood, cautiously navigated through the crowd of zombies. Their objective, a mansion ahead rumored to house a substantial amount of cash. They were Daryl and Rosita, who were forced to enter. Soon, they reached the mansion's entrance and pushed open the door. The interior was dimly lit. And for the moment, no zombies were in sight. They took off their helmets. Daryl's first instinct was to inspect the rooms, a habit formed in the post-apocalyptic world. Rosita noticed a corpse on the floor with blood that hadn't yet dried, indicating the person hadn't been dead for long. This puzzled them. With so many zombies around, how could any survivors have made it in? However, now was not the time for contemplation. Finding the cash was the priority, they proceeded deeper into the house. Reaching the room Sebastian had mentioned, the keypad lock on top had already lost power, requiring them to go to the basement to activate the solar generator. As they advanced, two zombies approached from behind. Rosita swiftly dealt with them, then they looked at the two corpses on the floor. The degree of decomposition of the corpses is obvious that the transformation in the past two days. Suddenly, it turns out that Sebastian has been threatening many citizens of the Commonwealth to do his job for him in order to get the money inside. A woman, pleading not to be abandoned, revealed she had been trapped inside for several days and would starve to death if left alone. Rosita reassured the woman that they were not allied with those who sent her. The woman, named April, calmed down. She began her story, explaining that she was deeply in debt while living in the Commonwealth. One day, a man came to her home, promising to help her out of her predicament. All she needed to do was come here, steal money, and they would share the proceeds. She had no choice, as she had two children to support. As April spoke, she choked up. Daryl didn't wait for April to finish before telling Rosita to stay here while he went down to the basement to find a generator. Three minutes later, Daryl successfully reached the basement, locating the solar generator. After pressing the start button, the device began running smoothly, but he soon discovered that there was a problem with the wire feed. And the machine seemed to be out of action, so he had to try to insert pliers to act as a wire. The generator showed signs of starting up. So it seemed to be working, but by then one of the zombies had gotten close enough for Daryl to kick it out of the way. Daryl then removed his armor, which hindered his agility. Daryl had just finished with the zombies, but there were more zombies inside the door. He had to back away as more than one came out. Fortunately, he found a steel pipe to use as a weapon. After eliminating all the zombies, Daryl secured the pliers once more. The light turning on indicated success. The keypad lock above began flashing red. Rosita quickly took out a card and entered the password. Just as they entered the room, April rushed up and embraced Rosita. Meanwhile, Daryl approached the safe, attempting to open it with a pry bar. However, after just a few knocks, the room's lights began to flicker, followed by the blaring sound of an alarm. It was evidently an automatic theft alarm system. Rosita pressed the combination lock twice to turn it off, but who knew that the alarm would be heard throughout the house? At this time, there was also movement outside. Should be as zombies were attracted by the sound over the Rosita, an expert in this field, urgently tried to disable the alarm. However, after two minutes of unsuccessful attempts, she resorted to violence, grabbing her helmet and smashing it against the keypad. It seems violence is more effective. Daryl successfully pried open the safe, revealing a stash of US dollars. Without hesitation, Rosita took out her backpack to pack the money. After loading the money, they used the locker to block the door, but listening to the noise, it felt like the zombies would break in at any time. Just then, gunshots from outside surprised them. They looked at the door unexpectedly. Obviously someone was cleaning up the zombies outside, but they didn't know whether it was a friend or foe. Weapons drawn, they prepared for the unexpected. Gradually, the outside fell silent, and suddenly, a rapid knocking on the door startled them. Nervously, they decided to take the initiative and guard the door in case of a sudden assault. To their relief, the unexpected visitors turned out to be Michael and Carol. It turns out that Carol and Daryl agreed to have lunch together today, but she didn't wait for Daryl. So Carol found Michael. Michael asked his men again and found out they come here to steal money. Rosita hurriedly explained that it was that bastard Sebastian who forced us to come here and threatened us with the baby. Michael, understanding the situation, didn't say much. He knew Sebastian's behavior, but who could do anything about it? With ammunition running low, they had to rely on old tactics to exit safely. Rosita generously gave her armor to April. Five minutes later, they left the room. They all have rich combat experience in the end of the world. In the zombie horde through the strong psychological quality, 
This is not the first time they have done things like this. Only this woman was scared when the zombies passed by her. In order to escape from the house filled with zombies, they moved cautiously, holding their breath. They made every effort to avoid making any noise, so as not to attract the attention of the zombies. Carol and the others had strong mental resilience, having experienced so much in the post-apocalyptic world. However, the woman, in particular, was terrified when zombies passed by her. Her mind went completely blank. Suddenly a zombie crashed into April's body and even hung up the backpack containing money. April was instantly frightened, trembling uncontrollably and pulling with increased intensity. When the zombie turned its head towards her, she became even more panicked. April used a knife to kill the zombie directly. The others, despite the risk of exposure, immediately cleared the nearby zombies to come to her rescue. Three minutes later, all the zombies had been killed. But their attention turned to April lying on the ground. April had been gnawed by the zombies. Rosita sadly used the knife to send her off for the last time. Rosita is also a mother and can understand the helplessness of women who come here. But the poor April's two children have no one to take care of them. Michael opened the door, revealing that there were still many zombies outside. They had to continue moving forward. Half an hour later, they successfully returned. Sebastian was not there. Only two lackeys were waiting for them. More precisely, they were waiting for the money they had brought back. Michael remained silent. Sebastian's lackeys disrespected him, but he had to endure it. However, their disregard for the lives of the Commonwealth civilians infuriated Michael. They were a little surprised that Michael would do that. But this incident also made them realize that Michael was not happy with this kind of behavior either, but he had no choice in the matter. Michael was, in essence, a just and righteous person, explaining his popularity among the people, sometimes, for the sake of family. One had to mind their own business, they were puzzled why tolerate Sebastian, shouldn't they expose the truth directly? After returning to the police station, they sat in silence, contemplating, Sebastian entered, noticing Daryl and Rosita had returned. He greeted them with a smile because their return meant success. Seeing the money, Sebastian was ecstatic, praising Daryl and Rosita continuously. Then, Sebastian noticed his two lackeys were absent. After a moment of contemplation, he seemed indifferent to the fate of others. If they were dead, so be it. He took out two stacks of money from his bag and threw them onto Daryl's desk. The events of today have made Daryl and Rosita realize that the roots of the Commonwealth are rotten and it may not be safe here. At this moment, in Lance's office, he was still attempting to contact Toby, but there was no response from inside. He was unaware that the CIA assassin and the soldiers had already met their demise. Just when Lance was thinking, Carol came in. She is now Lance's subordinate. Because of the wine incident, Lance thought Carol was very capable. So he let her stay with him. Carol then talks about Sebastian threatening civilians to help him steal money. Because Carol thought that Lance was a big steward and might be able to control such a phenomenon. And Carol felt that Lance was a good person from the contact in this period of time. Carol froze. But on second thought it became clear that these people were all the same I'm afraid. Lance says calmly that it's the idiots themselves who are willing to. They made a mess of their lives. I gave them a chance to turn it around. They just didn't take it. Everyone has to play their part. That's the rule here. Do you understand? While Carol appeared to agree on the surface, her face changed as she turned away. From now on, she decided not to trust the Commonwealth anymore. Lance's expression also darkened as he couldn't reach Toby. Something must have happened. The next day, Lance, accompanied by a squad of soldiers, arrived at the apartment. Upon reaching the ground floor, they discovered Toby's mutilated body. Daryl, with his experience, sensed that this incident was not simple. Upstairs, they found the surviving Aaron and Gabriel. Lance listened to their accounts and found it hard to believe. According to Aaron, they broke into the flat and there was a firefight that ended with the man here killing all the soldiers, including Toby. This was a group of highly trained and armed soldiers. There was a suspicious point. Why did those people spare Aaron and Gabriel? Moreover, the assailants managed to escape. Aaron and Gabriel were sure at once that this was the way it happened. Lance was furious. He didn't believe Aaron and Gabriel's story. Then Lance smiled and said, I think there's a wild guess. It doesn't make sense that you two would be the only ones left in the flat after these violent maniacs brutally murdered the soldiers, but it doesn't make sense that you'd lie to me for a bunch of murderous maniacs. The only possibility is that these lunatics are not strangers. The atmosphere became tense. Daryl, vigilant from the beginning, kept glancing back at the soldiers. If his companion was in danger, he would take Lance hostage first. However, 
Lance was cunning and wouldn't allow a conflict to arise in public, he immediately dismissed it as his own wild guess and urged them not to take it to heart. The term smiling tiger seemed apt for this individual. Subsequently, Lance ordered the soldiers to leave and prepare to track down those who escaped from the apartment, he wouldn't take Aaron and Gabriel's word for it. These two individuals could lie for only one reason, they were familiar with the people who killed the soldiers. Therefore, Lance planned to visit Hilltop, but he cunningly framed it as a visit to remind Maggie to stay safe. 